Hi, everyone. <laughs> so I think we wanted to share, and Taurko wanted to share a little bit of flute. To, to receive a Taurko um, in British Columbia for the first time. <coughs> and I will ask a few questions to, to direct um, the conversation and the talk. Um, Sophie and Taurko, can you talk to us about your lineage, where you come from? And um, yeah, your teachings, how you've been taught. And, yeah. um, well, uh, I am uh, from a small community in the Andes. Mostly we know that's the Andes mountain in South America and the part of it. and. I'm from a, a small community, Quechua community, and these communities are, are uh, in, a, in a places in the mountain that it is like the last communities where people live in the high level of the sea. Uh, and these communities as the far and remote communities where the descendants of the Incas for many years, thousands of years, one was still keeping the, the knowledge and the information of, uh, of the Incas. So, but now 
it is um, being released and is coming out to be here to the world because this information that was uh, kept there in the mountains it is just recently being being exposed to to everybody outside of of Peru and outside of the Quechua communities. So this is also part of a, of an ancient pro prophecy that uh, will be a time when the, this knowledge of the ancient solar codes will be revealed to humanity. Uh, and as we know, many things happen in, in this continent and many people uh, lose their traditions and practices, but there is still places like high in the room and also in the deep in the jungle, there is still these people that was, they was able to keep this uh, knowledge and information of these practices is still in, intact. And this prophecy talks about the, about this time when this uh, knowledge and information is going to be shared to human because we are talking about the information uh, that hold universal teachings, universal practices that is known only from, uh, for a group or a community. It is uh, universal teachings that is actually for a human. So this is a little bit one of the, of the meanings that I'm coming here to share and talking about the, how, how I receive this uh, this information and this teaching and how I'm being practicing now is uh, because because these communities was uh, uh, in a very far and remote place and now people most know like the last uh, communities of the Incas that's what they call it now and. So the people that are already knowing practices, so they are learning. So because this way of living and the tradition and the practices that was preserved, I was also being a part of a lineage that we call in our tradition the Layas or the Laikas lineage that this very far uh, history of lineage uh, that is before the continents and the separation of the continents and, and almost the time of beginning, not only in this part of where I am from, is talking about the, the whole world. So this uh, lineage, it was the keepers and the ones that they uh, pass in through generation. Uh, these uh, practices and teachings and information. So I born in that uh, place with with my grandfathers, and I was still being traditionally as like a rite of passage that you begin when you are a kid. Uh, seven years old, you begin the first initiations to these uh, practices. And these initiations in that community, it is part of the living, it is part of the way of living. And these also initiations and practices that uh, the kids receive is no only for they some to 
to be able to share is also for a personal growing and developing of their own conscience as uh, individuals. But the ones that they actually take or hold responsibility to share with the community and outside the community, they are not that much of that people. And these people, we call them Hamautas or Hakura Akuye. Hakura Hakuye, they are uh, people that uh, hold these teachings, but they are the ones that they will be sharing in their community and outside of their community. And my grandfather was one of that, uh, a person of that lineage, and he was a uh, Kamani, Kamani is the, a master that um, not only works for their community, is we call the, uh, um, so it's a, uh, he, is a keeper of uh, different uh, knowledge and information, not only from the Quechua communities, different communities uh, in South America. So the Kamanis, they are like uh, a circle, of, a council of uh, elders or a council of masters that they are uh, able to share with different community information and knowledge and I was growing during that time of the, the journey of my grandfather. So I was traveling, I learned, and I was being introduced to that because the way of life. And in this, um, in this way, I was just also able, I was able to, to me to reckon that, um, something very profound in myself that is that comes with uh, realizations I did to, through the time. So this is a little bit of how I was just, uh, I, I was just uh, born in that community and now I am a, a, a Kamani, uh, the descendants of the Kamani lineage and this is uh, something that it is um, part of myself as uh, that I realized in my own in my own and personal journey that it is uh, it is a path, no? a path where you are yourself and uh, in a profound level. It is a very actually very beautiful path because you are able also to share with others take that responsibility so that's the way that I learn and I continue these practices and which is mm, after practicing for a long time now I'm I'm a person that is holding this information and knowledge to do the same just like I I learned so I'm now I'm have the responsibility to share with my own community, but not only with my community, because these are uh, universal teachings and information. So I'm able now to share with uh, with more. I am. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna have the the honor to receive um, the teachings on Salt Spring. And I wanted to ask how those teachings and the solar Inca codes can help us, you know, in our community, in our families, in our life, in our society, and in this crucial time that we're in, how to support us? Well, when we are talking about the Inca solar codes, uh, the solar comes with the, with the highest vibration that we know as, as the sun in our universe. So that's uh, the, the sun is the, the higher manifestation of vibration and frequency in our universe. That's the higher manifestation of that life source and life. So when we talk about the solar, it's like the, that is being 
following this uh, principle. So when we are talking about the solar codes, we are talking about the natural law. These natural laws are, are the foundation of the movement of the universe, are the foundation of, the, of life, not only for a human beings in the cosmos, there is this uh, foundation that is the natural law, like the time and the space. So these are the, the carry information and this solar code is carrying the information in a different levels and dimensions. And also it, it is interconnected between the microcosmos and the macrocosmos. So when we are talking about our codes, we are talking a very, a very special profound meaning that is holding these solar codes and how the solar codes can be used or what is the meaning for us as human beings. That's um, also because the practice of codes as a foundation of a way of living, it was, uh, it was very, very much manifest at that time and practicing by following this natural laws, that is embracing life force, embracing the moments and the cycles of the cosmos, the universe and the energy. Now, how we can use these solar codes is it is all different ways to to see and to understand. For example, the code that talks about a capacity that all human beings are holding. And this is a seed and in the Inca language we call them the Inti Muhu. Inti is the solar, uh, the solar energy, and muhu is the seed. All human beings, is no matter which culture, where you come from, uh, which tradition you are practicing, or which race we are, that's, that's doesn't matter because we as human beings, we are the holder of that sacred seed that is the intimuhu is the solar seed that is that is holding information of life information of um, transformation is holding information of evolution so this seed that everybody carries has a way to Jeremy has a way to grow, has a way to develop. And just like the, the seed themselves, it is a process how the seed is beginning that transformation from that seed coming a plant. So in the same way, we hold that seed of conscience where we can be, when we are able to transform by using some practices and these practices are uh, also the the information that is holding this seed the intimu so the intimu who holds the dimensions and the levels of human coming time and there is a way to awake the seed just like a, a seed is being germinated so we are actually we have the capacity to transform and to awake that seed that is within ourselves and once this seed is being activated or is being awake now this seed is beginning so in the same way when we are talking about the seed we are talking about this essence of our conscience that is there is inside of us that is ready to transform 
is ready to activate, is ready to awake. And this it can be just holding there. And when this being hold within yourself, that's when we call that uh, that we are asleep or no awake actually. We are um, we are a trap in a reality that don't let us see our true essence. And once we discover a little bit of our essence, so we begin to explore this um, this essence of our conscience, we are beginning to learn about ourselves. So when we talk about the solar seed, it's about ourselves, it's about our essence of our conscience. And at the same time, discover a little bit more about our capacity that we have as human beings because mostly we know about ourselves uh, a little bit but actually there is more to know about uh, our own capacity as a human being because we as a, as a human beings we are very complex and as we know the, you know the modern medicine there is some specific, uh, you know, scientists that they study something specific about the human biology or the human um, systems. So because it's to expand, one can do everything. So if we just see it in that way, it's like uh, so complex that every, some, some some people that is beginning to study our systems or, or biology, there is uh, something specific that they can just learn or going into um, to explore. We are very complex. So when this uh, seed is being this solar code, this seed is being activated, we are beginning to know and to die within ourselves. So it's like uh, getting to know your essence. And in this, uh, in this um, inner exploration that we begin through the activation of this solar seed, we recognize in the Inca culture, in the Inca tradition, we recognize the four dimensions. And this is a path of inner exploration where we are beginning to recognize the dimension of energy dimension and the system dimension. There is the mind dimension, uh, the system of the mind. There is the physical dimension and the system of the physic. And there's the psychic dimension and the system of the psychic dimension. So this is path that is taking you, once we begin to activate our solar seed, is taking us to this path that we call Kapagnani. The Kapagnani path is a, a path of inner exploration, healing, and transformation. So we go into this path uh, to, to explore and to find um, our essence that is that is there and is uh, only in this activation of that seed we can actually can to these inner dimensions that we have we all everybody as a human beings no so the, the intimo who activation and how we can actually begin this path through this uh, of the solar seed and that's uh, only talking about this aspect of a, of a human being aspect and how we hold this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and do you, I'm curious to know if uh, in, within the wisdom keeper comes, if there was something discussing, we should share those teachings now with humanity because it's important. Is there some kind of 
things like that that were discussed. Like, okay, now is the time to share, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there is uh, this um, talking about that this comes with the prophecy. The prophecy mm-hmm. that there is actually being for from the different uh, ethnic groups in this continent, mm-hmm. North, Central, and South America, and which consul know only this consul is being created right now at this time. These come from uh, the lineage even of that consul was still still here. So the the circle of that uh, that keepers that keepers of that knowledge they are aware that actually this time we are in a in a manifestation of the of these ancient prophecies and in the in the Inca prophecy we call that the Kutek when we are in a process of transition where we actually the ones that they are keeping this ancient ancient uh, knowledge and information will come and will be able to share no outside of their community and it's because this uh, these teachings and this information is no is no only for that group that the ones that they are keeping or the ones that was keeping this information also part of these prophecies when these actually these teachings are being shared to the world to the four corners of the planet and this prophecy talks about this the taripai pacha time when the different cultures different traditions and will share uh, many things during this time and this is one of uh, the manifestation that is actually is happening right now just because these ancient teachings are being more exposed right now to everybody and so it's going outside of uh, the the place that is from. I have some questions popping up. So I'm wondering if before talking about the retreat, we can take a few questions. Uh, I tradition we believe you believe in um, in reincarnation. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we call that the, um, we don't call the recognition, but we call the Pog. What am Pog is the continuation of the of the of the spirit. The continuation that is uh, of uh, uh, of the Ilya. We call Ilya. It is a light. It is a vibration. It is a light, and it's. It is more. It is more profound that even the, the the light that we are being received from the sun. This is a uh, ilia, so it's like uh, this fifth element that is there. It was there, and it will be in the future. So it's in the past, and it's in the future. That's uh, something that we can understand that there is uh, this um, frequency of this uh, vibration of of a being, of uh, information that we can say like the spirit or a soul. But yeah, this entity uh, travel through time and spaces and it's just changing shapes and forms and bodies. But yeah, there is this waram pogoch that there is actually this uh, traveling to time. And it is at the same time for par- it's part of the evolution of that entity. Mm. That's, and 
travel into time and space. Yeah. Mm, thank you. I have, I see something else here saying, um, uh, Ellie saying, can our MP Muhu already be activated? Is it possible? That's yeah. that's a very good question because if if uh, we will know when actually we are in the seeking we are in the inner exploration mm -hmm. so that it is possible that the intimo is already activate you know but also there is uh, you know there is this natural law that is part of the of the movement and the cycles of the cosmos and this natural uh, is the change and transformation that is happening natural and is known in our hand all the time mm -hmm. and this happened in all different levels so during a time this uh, manifestation of this change and transformation that is a natural law that can be affect that can affect to us and provoke an awakening that's following this natural law but also we have the capacity we ourselves as human beings to provoke ourselves that awakening mm -hmm. so there is something that is already a natural that is going to happen even with our desire but it's taking a long period of time but also because we are the ones that hold this intimuhu, we are able to provoke this activation. We are able to, to provoke that awakening mm -hmm. of the solar seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our intimuhu awakened. <laughs> How we know? <laughs> <laughs> when we are a little bit more aware of mm -hmm. ourselves no actually aware of the outside is actually aware of the inside so it's more like a, a talk about conscience is not the conscience that we actually are logical conscience you know we think that our logical conscience is we do things that is right or wrong that's another way of of consciousness that there is beyond that uh, logical beyond that um, rational and beyond that memory that, that is already there and is something that is taking you beyond you know this reality or this uh, awareness that we that we have in this life so we will know that because actually it is something that is at the same time developing within ourselves so if something is a little bit more in balance and harmony so something is maybe probably it is the seed the solar seed is activating and is already beginning to grow mm. so that's one way that we can recognize that that is happening thank you we have another question from laura hello laura <laughs> according to your knowledge and in the context we are globally living, which is the, um, the new human history that is happening. What should be our main priority now from your knowledge, from your lineage? The main priority right now? Yeah, um, as, as a human being to awaken this in Timuhu. Well, there is uh, something that we have to understand that this, this movement and cycles is not in our hand. That's one thing that we need to understand that this will happen even with if we are conscious or not. So change in the cosmos is no matter that we are aware or not, that we know or not, or that it's no matter that we want to be part of not, that change is going to manifest because that's a natural law. Snow in our hands, the change, conscience of the cosmos, or the conscience of our planet, is going to happen. But now, when we are talking about the level of as a human beings, how as a collective conscience, how we can 
create maybe a better world, a positive world, or maybe we are visioning a world that is, uh, is more in balance, in harmony. If we just have that vision for a better world, I think one of the things that we should pay attention is really important. It is how we, as an individual, as a self-conscious, what is our giving to this collective conscious? Mm -hmm. Because every individual has a part of this collective conscious. So what is what we are giving as an individual to this change or to this way to see the better world happen? So we have to maybe begin this transformation of our better world within ourselves. So begin the change in ourselves as a person, as an individual. Begin the change in our family. So, and it's growing bigger and bigger and bigger. But the first is I think that we shall give and pay our attention is to see a better world in ourselves, to a better world in to begin with that. That's uh, actually a foundation for a better call it conscience. Mm -hmm. So each individual plays a role in all this collective or universal conscience that we are all in connect. The best that we can do is to give that um that um, for the future or for the world mm -hmm. yeah and interestingly we call them codes is there is a relationship with the beliefs that we carry individually with our family as a collective codes that can help us tap into who we really are and release some belief or things that we carry? Is it something that can... Yes, yes, because mm -hmm. mostly we are, uh, sometimes we, only we can say that we know through our realization. So that's one way. So sometimes if we, yes, receive information and knowledge from somebody, Yes, we can receive that, but the other thing is actually to channel that information with yourself. So that comes with a realization. And only in that way, actually, you can know the really, the truly meaning of something because it's being experienced to yourself, with yourself, in yourself. And when we have a systems of belief, that may is blockaging our full potential because uh, sometimes we determine something and being created for ourselves that this, this is like that or this, I'm sure it is like that. But actually, just in that context, if we sink very deeply in that, we may lose opportunity to see a little bit beyond that or another path, another possibilities. Mm -hmm. So actually a structure of belief is not like it's negative, it is part because that's a big, uh, uh, a big part of how you can actually live strongly to something, but it's, that is not holding very tight and is, and it is uh, it's a positive, but if it's not uh, something that is holding you only in one way and it's, you see far beyond that structure of belief is actually, it's, it's a blockage. It's a blockage that is holding us mm. and don't let us go forward and to explore, to do the exploration for ourselves, mm -hmm. yeah. I have a last question before we speak a bit about truth. 
and it's an interesting one like codes can be transformed they can transform the but can also does it our dna do you feel that it can change our <laughs> physical structure and okay. our dna <laughs> that's a very good question because um, when we talk about the healing and transformation um, what we have what we recognize that we need to heal for example it must it is of course from the past to come in terms of something that we need to realize or to understand is because something that we don't was able to understand and from the past so when we travel into time and space you know we have a path past we have this present and we have the future and we we continue in that way so our dna what we call is a frequency that holds information and this uh, this line of life this frequency of life each experience lifetime it is being gathered in our dna and however is your path lives so or just this lifetime talking about just this life the time that we born until right now we already being modified our genetic code through all the experience that we pass through and now how we can actually so even unconsciously our dna is being modified each time more if we are no awake or if we are with less awareness it is changing so but now when we are beginning actually in the seeking of a healing and to find uh, the way of uh, to 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 find a balance within ourselves of this of the healing we can create to the uh, a place that actually we begin to modify our genetic code so when we talk about healing our traumas healing our pains from the past healing our energy mm -hmm. wow. yeah <laughs> thank you so much antorco and isabel thank you thank you so much for having us and sharing this it's such yeah such a blessing thank you so much thank you <laughs> thank you all the best on your retreat Thank you. <laughs> All the best to you too. <laughs>